All right, let's back up a second here. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I've looked at chatter in my machine using audio spectrum analysis. This is a really easy, low cost way to get some more information about what your machine's doing. But at the end of the day, you're still kind of reading the tea leaves. You're not quite sure what's going on and you're just trying to interpret this kind of secondary source, the audio that's being given off by your machine to figure out what's going on. So I've always been smitten with the idea of just videotaping the end mill and seeing what it's actually doing. And today, that's what we're gonna do. The setup's pretty simple. I know the right side of my machine chatters for some reason more than anywhere else. So we're going to load up a block of mild steel on that side and hit it with a four flute end mill. See what we can see on a high speed camera. The tool of choice is a quarter inch four flute variable helix end mill from Online Carbide. I've used this tool before in previous videos and it works pretty well with my machine. Let's be honest, we're all here for that sweet, sweet slow motion video. So let's just jump right into it. The spindle's at 24,000 RPM. It's a half inch depth of cut with a 30 thou step over, 150 inches per minute, and the video is at 19,000 frames per second. So it's quite slow. There's some things to notice while you're looking at this high speed footage. First is the size of the chip. It's a consistent long chip. That's the full depth of cut. The rate of chips coming off is also consistent. So they're coming off each time the end mill makes a pass and that there's no obvious deflection of the end mill or the workpiece. So there's not any real chatter. It gets slightly chattery at the end, but it sounded good in person, and this is generally a pretty good cut on my machine. So in contrast, this next clip was designed to induce chatter. So I know it's parameters that don't work well for a variety of reasons. The high-speed camera is at a slightly slower frame rate to get a wider shot. The feed rate is bumped up to 200 inches per minute, and the main difference is that the radial width of cut is down to 00125, so a very tiny sliver of metal that's being cut off. The cut went pretty well up until this point, but right around the middle we start to see issues and the chatter starts showing up. You'll notice that there are gaps appearing and the chips flying out. The chips aren't always the full length. And in a moment, you'll start to notice some really dramatic oscillations of the end mill and the workpiece itself. Amusingly, the oscillations, the resonance of the system is a little slower than the high speed camera. So it, it's more noticeable actually if you run at a faster frame rate rather than slowing everything down as much as you can. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is chatter. This is what's happening when you hear chatter on your machine. And honestly, it's pretty wild to see it happening in slow motion. The workpiece is moving all around, the vise is moving all around, the spindle head is nodding back and forth. Like this looks like it's made out of a wet noodle. It's pretty wild to think that this is happening whenever you hear chatter. I think what's especially interesting are the periods where the end mill is not engaging the work because it's been bounced out due to this chatter. You can see it takes a few cuts and then gets bounced what looks like forwards or backwards in the video. But in reality, it's probably doing kind of a circular motion as it deflects off the work. An interesting analysis that you can do is subtracting the prior frame from the current frame of the video. And this is like a really simple motion detection technique used in machine vision. Uh, there's many, many better ways to do it, but this is a really simple technique you can use. And what we can see is more clearly the things that are moving in the frame. So obviously the end mill spinning and the chips are flying out, but you can also look at the workpiece and see a little more clearly how much it's shifting up and down. I also made markers in the video and then advanced a few frames to find the maximum distance that the workpiece and the end mill itself had both deflected. I took that over to image J, which is like a scientific image analysis program calibrated everything and measured the distances. And we can see that the workpiece moved down about nine thousandths of an inch and the end mill moved backwards 22 thousandths of an inch, which is wild. I mean, moving backwards 20 thousandths, that's, I don't know, it's just pretty bananas. And the workpiece itself moving up and down nearly 10 thousandths of an inch and side to side a couple thousand. I'm like, this is some serious movement going on. Getting a head-on shot is a little more difficult due to the depth of field and the lighting requirements, but even here you can see similar patterns happening. The workpiece is kind of breathing up and down, and if you look at where the end mill is seated in the collet at the top, you'll start to notice a 
oscillatory back and forth motion as it chatters off the workpiece. I played around with a whole bunch of different parameters to see what induces this kind of chatter and what doesn't. And it really boils down to the width of cut. If you're not taking a big enough chip, then it starts skipping and then the whole system starts oscillating, at least with a relatively not stiff benchtop router like I have. It's probably a different story in a proper VMC. But at least for these small machines, it really shows that you need to take a good chip so that the end mill is always in the cut and not skipping around. Otherwise, you get this sort of behavior. And to really prove the point, this cut is way too aggressive for my machine. It's a 50 thou step over, which is 20% of the end mill running at 150 inches per minute. You could visibly and audibly hear the spindle bog down, and this is not something I would do on a regular basis. But the cut looks really good. It's clean, there's not really any chatter, there's minimal vibrations. So this really proves that it's not necessarily the stiffness of the machine always, it's also the parameters of the cut. And that brings us to this final cut. I was dialing in parameters, wanting to see how thick of a cut I could get on video. So I bumped it up to 70 thou, which is excessive for my machine. And I meant to slow down the feed rate because there's no way the spindle or my machine was gonna keep up with 150 inches per minute at 70 thou width of cut. I forgot to do that or typed it in wrong or something. I'm not quite sure. In any case, it ran full speed, 150 inches per minute at 70 thou, 24,000 RPM. About halfway through the cut, I heard the spindle just shut off. Essentially the VFD just gave up, said, I can't do this and quit, went into protection mode. I learned that my fault protection is not wired correctly between the spindle and the controller. And so the CNC just kept on cruising, even though the spindle had turned off. And the rest is pretty much history. A non-powered spindle crushing into 70 thou of mild steel means someone's going to lose. And in this case, it was the carbide end mill. I'll be honest, I'm not that sad. I mean, sure, I didn't want to break an end mill, but that footage is so cool to look at. It's remarkable how brittle carbide is, right? These fractures are super clean. There's essentially no deformation before it breaks. It's just cutting metal one second and then fracturing into little pieces the next second. It's really like a piece of glass or ceramic. It's a very brittle material. There's not even that much debris coming off the end mill. It's mostly just big chunks, which is uh, it's really cool to see. If we view it again, look at how much the spindle moves upwards as the end mill is seizing up on the workpiece and breaking. As soon as it finishes breaking off, you can see the whole spindle nose drops by 50, 60 thousandths. It's remarkable. If you enjoyed today's video and like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and effort to put together, so every new subscriber gives me that little hit of dopamine that keeps me going. If you have suggestions about what to film next with this high-speed camera in the home shop, let me know. I'm definitely looking for new things to try out. Maybe high-speed steel versus carbide, see if there's a difference there. Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below. I think that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching.